Hello, good afternoon everybody, how are you? Welcome to Craft Stash Live. Happy Friday, it's the 20th of May and we've got a fantastic brand new launch for you. And we have got one of the most famous crafters in the whole wide world with us joining us today for her first collection with Craft Stash. We are all completely giddy and excited uh, here in the studio, over where Sheena is as well, and in the office too. So, without any... Uh, I mean, you can see already, we've got the name Sheena here. You've probably seen on social media, we've got the lovely Sheena, Sheena Douglas, of course. You've seen her in the craft industry for so many years and we are thrilled that she has joined the Craft Stash family and she is launching the new Stamp and Play collection. So we're going to show you everything already today. We're going to show you inspiration. We're going to show you demonstrations that Sheena's filmed for us. So get those pens and pencils out and get playing along too. But first of all, before we go and say hello to Sheena, and welcome her properly finally it seems like she's been with us months already but properly welcome her to the family um, I just need to tell you about a few quick deals um, so you can get shopping ahead and then watch and be inspired and relax so we've got the stamp and play collection now this consists of three stamp sets which Sheena's going to go through everything with you they are absolutely beautiful and um, in, 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 I can never say this word Let's just say inspirational because I've forgotten the word completely now and I'm just going to make a mess of it if I try and say it. Innovative. There we go. There we go. I got there in the end. Uh, they are absolutely beautiful. Three stamp sets and then we've got three stencils as well and then a paper pack. So there's seven items. Now, what I would say is hold your horses just a moment. Don't go putting those items into your basket individually because Sheena and I have been having a look and we've had a little chat and we've worked out a way you can make a massive saving. So hold your horses just for a moment. You can put them in your basket if you want to, just don't quite check out yet until we tell this little secret. Um, I'm going to just look at the comments in a moment. Hello, there's so many of you joining us. Thank you so much. All saying hello to both of us. Now, Sheena, I'm going to come to you now because I've been talking about you as if you're not here and you are here with me, of course. Welcome, massive, massive welcome to Craft Sash family and to Craft Sash Live today. Yay, hi everyone. Yeah, I am. I'm, I've just been so looking forward to this. And as you say, there's been a lot of work, a lot of um, excitement and well, I, we're all a bit giddy because you know it's all it's all going so well. I'm loving it. I'm loving the new relationship we've got and and I hope you love this new collection too because oh, uh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. I wanted to bring something different, you know, so that you've got the a stamp you can use just right out of the box, as I always bring you, Lou, but then something that you can play with and, and having a little bit of experiment with, which and, is uh, the play bit. And I was going to say that, that play bit, I mean, that does, I think about you, when I think of messy play, creative play, you're the first artist that comes to mind. So um, I know in the first video, you actually run through some fantastic ways of using your stamps. It's not a simple stamp and maybe colour in, is it? There's so no, much you can do with these. Absolutely. One of them is, one of them is, you know, we're talking about um, at what stage you need to be to, to um, appreciate this set, this, yeah. this concept, the collection. Any stage, because if you just want a nice, a good, well detailed, shaded, contoured stamp with just the right amount of shading in, not too much, but to give you a clue where the darker areas are, where the contouring is, to make it look 3D in an arty fashion, then you use the main image, the main floral detailed image. But that other image, the one that we're calling the wireframe, that one is there to play with. So that one goes over the top of that one. Then once you've right. coloured it in, or you can use it in lots of different ways, which you'll see in the videos I've recorded. Yes. And we won't wait too long to look at that either. Now, everybody, we are going to have a giveaway. Of course, we are giving away three complete collections of Sheena's product. Um, Sheena, what I'm going to ask you to do, and I am dropping you in it a little bit here, is while we're <laughs> watching the first video, yeah. Could you just think of a little question for people to answer, to be able to enter, to win one of your collections? So I won't ask you now, but maybe mm. after the first video, if you could put that question to the viewers okay. and they can answer it in the comments. All um, right, the brain's ticking over and oh. working now already. I will yeah. leave that with you for a little while. But be before we go and watch this video, what we need to do is just discuss this this little um, this little bundle that we kind of found on the website. We worked out, didn't we, which is the best possible way to get the full collection because we know everyone's going to want absolutely everything. So now, for everybody who hasn't been on the website yet, the stencils are $6.99 amazing price there's three of those 
In fact, one of the stencils is one that hasn't been seen anywhere yet at all. So, so most of these items have had a little TV appearance earlier this week, but the Leafwork stencil wasn't on TV anywhere, so it's completely exclusive to us here at Craft Stash. So this is the only place you can get it. So three stencils at 6 dollars three beautiful stamp sets at $14.99. And then there is also a paper pack at $9.99. So if you were to purchase all of those, that takes it to $75.93. Great price, fantastic price. But we worked out, we've got some fantastic bundles and they are stamp and stencil bundles. So um, we've mixed together a stamp and a stencil each uh, for just $17.49. So that's taking off £4.50 each. Now, if you were to put and I know, Sheena, you probably have um, design team members and friends who are like, how can I get it? How can I get it? This is going to be the best way, I think. The three bundles, the three stamp and stencil bundles, pop those into your basket. That's six of the items and then a paper pack. So that's all you need to do. Three stamp and stencil bundles and a paper pack. That is the entire collection for only 62.46. So you're saving that way £13.47. Now... £13.47 saving, but because you've gone over £30, you're getting free UK delivery. Because you've gone over £40, you also get the option to spread the payments over four instalments. That's completely interest-free, no credit check as well, and you get the items after your first payment. So how's that sound, Sheen? Is that the way you'd do it? I think it's amazing. I'm just, I can't tell you, it's win-win, this whole new relationship. <laughs> it's like, this keeps getting better. It's like, Absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's something else. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah. There oh, we go. Oh, so good. we will recap that, not in quite so much detail. We recap that for everybody. If you're kind of trying to watch and going through the baskets as well and all sorts on Craft Stash, that's craftstash.co.uk and craftstash.us for everybody. Should we get into the first demonstration first of all, and then we'll come back and have a look at maybe some of your beautiful card samples that you've done for us? Um, Absolutely, sounds great. Lovely, we'll see you in a moment. Thank you. Hi, Sheena here. Thanks, Lou. I think the first thing we need to do is explain the concept. So I'm going to do this as uh, concisely, but for me, you know what that's like, um, uh, but as clearly as possible because it's called Stamp and Play, and the stamp bit is quite explanatory. We've been there, done that. If you're a stamper, if not, we'll explain. But the play bit, what's that all about? I'm going to tell you. So if you have a look at the stamps, I'll be able to um, take you through what you're going to get and then I'll show you why. So if we look on the overhead and see what you're looking at now to see what um, this is all about. So what we've got are the stamp sets. I've got three stamp sets in this whole in the launch. There's papers and the stencils to come to. But let me take you through, first of all, what the stamps are about. Um, you've got the what you would normally get is a detailed stamp, a drawn stamp, a drawn but a detailed butterfly. That's if you follow me, if you know what kind of style you're going to get, that's what you're going to be used to. But look, there's another thing going on here. What's that? And what's this? They're what I'm calling the wire frame. They are, they'll, I'm going to show you why they're really cool. They're the play bit. There's the stamp bit in the croissant, and there's the play bit in that. And then with the sunflower, the detailed shaded. So really, you can just stamp this with a little bit of distressing. A damp brush and you've got everything going on there one color looks amazing you got your cute little bee as it is the day of the bee and um, then and a smaller version so you know foreground distance and there's the wireframe with that so let me take you through why and what that's all about so if we look at this in the croissant if you stamp and just stamp it with one colored ink and color it in this is what we'd expect this is this is the level of um of detail and um shading and contouring i would um i would want you to get and that's what i try to give you with my stamps so there's hatching there you see where it's darker in here it tells you it put it a little bit darker color in there but it'll do it automatically for you it'll make it darker at the base of those petals because I've put the detail in there, I've put the lines. So then you think, oh, lovely embossing powders. I've bought myself a few, I've treated myself recently. I'm gonna give it a bit of the embossing treatment. So you put your embossing powders on and then you get something that looks similar to that. Now that's pretty and it's blingy, look, ooh. But it doesn't have the depth and the contouring that that one does. Look at how 3D that looks, look at the shadow on it. Look at it, it's got shape and, and form. That one, not so much. 
again blingy but not so much and what's happened is if you look at these little bits in here you've literally embossed everything including the bits that really shouldn't be embossed they're supposed to be pushed back lines in the stamp are supposed to create a shadow a look of shadow here i said look at me i've got even more bling than the other bits so what you would do is stamp it the first time with this one stamp it color it in and this is just the first thing you can do with stamp and play then you go over the top with your wireframe so this one here there in your positioner and you ink it up with some versamark or whatever um, embossing ink you, you use and then you emboss it with your bling and look you now get the best of both worlds you've got the shading you've got the contouring but you've got that lovely bit of bling and the pop it looks kind of like threaded that expensive you know like posh and um, gold thread fabric or something um with, with full color just where you want it to be that there straight away that's the first thing we're talking with and um, stamp and play but Let's take it further we've got stencils into the mix here we've had a bit play with the background we've got a bit funky with the color but even if you don't want that obvious gold or silver edging what i've done here is use a glittery embossing powder and it's given it a fine lovely glimmer <coughs> much more detailed and um delicate than i would have done if i'd applied it with glue because it's applied it just to the edge of the petals because that's what the wireframe's done with your embossing powder um then the other thing with stamp and play is you can stamp out the basic image and then have a bit of a play and create the lines make the lines look like for stitching give it a little bit of that um a little quirky effect we've got zigzag stitching here we've got a little knot types we've got a running stitch have play with it that's the play let me show you how that's my little card to show you but look here we go in card form this gorgeous gorgeous card here that Kay's created if i bring this up she's done four stitching in here even on the backing papers but look how she's given this the treatment with a little four stitching around the outside and had a bit of play with that looks really super cool the other thing she's done here is with that one look in that gorgeous card papers we're going to talk about in a minute look at what she's done here little swirlies how cool is that this is the play bit so by giving you that wireframe stamp i've given you massive unlimited value in the look that you can create all i've given you is the shape the proportion of the flower that the kind of blueprint for that flower and then you with the uh, techniques and things we're sharing you can have a play and make it your own make it whatever you want however you want it to look i think that is super cool a different look that we can create is if you want to just go ahead and have a a loose sketchy style you can create a line that looks a little bit like this if you want to use a brush pen um look at how bold that looks and think whoa that's a bit in your face you know i don't know about mm, not sure might like it don't know if i do like it but have a look at this in card form when you see it put into um you know into effect this is one of debbie's cards look at that look if i bring that up that flower has got go oh, it's style it looks a little bit like um brush art they um absolutely beautiful look at the look at the weight of the line that debbie's got underneath here and that's what a brush pen can do with you it looks completely different to my original um cross hatched and hatched shaded version absolutely stunning you can then just say hey you know what i haven't got loads of stuff yet i'm just starting off i'm just you know or i haven't traveled with lots of whatever i'm you know, in the caravan i'm in the van whatever but I'm, I'm off for a little few nice little weekend and all i've got is a pencil that's what you can do with just one pencil that was a either an hb or a 2b pencil that was even a mechanical pencil so they're not really you know, meant for fine finesse art any pencil will do not to be mechanical as long as you got to remember something at the same time um that there well, then if you look at my facebook page i'll actually i've done that if you have a look there's a um a live to show you there's also a live showing you how to do the scribble coloring that's so much fun that's with a little bit of watercolor in the background and using scribbly fine liners gel pens another look here using the over stamp that's with your gilding flakes absolutely fabulous lots and lots to play with let's talk about now the backing papers so we'll pop that to one side let me show you how we can change the look of these 
um, the backing papers. It was important not just to have the designs. All these designs were created by yours truly. I've used images from the main um, the main collection so that it it is in harmony with what you've got. I've, I've muted them, I've diffused them, I've layered them with textures, and I've made them look cool straight out of the box. They look super cool. So if you look at this one to start off with, but the most important thing, well not the most important, but the super important thing is I had to have the right card paper this is a heavyweight it's a thin card actually it's um, more like a thin card than a paper and it takes ink that's that's hugely important because the play bit is carrying through the backing papers we're still playing but important to see if you're a newbie and you just want to make a quick card or you want to just have something that looks great out of the box thank you very much I'll just do that and I'll pop it on there I'm happy I'm good to go you are sorted even that pencil sketch one let me see if i can find that pencil sketch look if you pop that on there if you put a pencil sketch on there pop that on there that's a fabulous card that little bit of black matting on there you're done i've done nothing to it but we're going to start inking it so look a little bit of distress ink oh i've designed it so that you've got three cool neutral colors and three warm neutral colors they're, they're really desaturated. There's there's hardly any colour in there, but what there is is a hint of a grey tone or a brownie tone. So on the grey tone, you would use your blues, your greens, your cooler purples, turquoise kind of colours. Um, on the warm tones, that's where you're going to use your reds, your yellows, your oranges, and warmer greens, which means they've got more yellow in them. And as you can see here, this is just Bundle Sage and the Kitsch Flamingo using an applicator like that. The trick is a little bit of glycerin on till we'll make it, we'll dilute it a bit so you don't get a pop of strong colour. And um, again, there's tutorials on my uh, Facebook page. We'll be doing more here. We'll be we'll be doing lots and lots more tutorials. So that's the first one. Two inks. Thank you very much. Look at how it's transformed. Isn't that cool? Right, so what about another one? Let me show you. I kind of give the game away there. Don't look at that one. You haven't seen that one. All right, the next one. We have got... Um, another abstract kind of looks like cracked ice you can see the shadow the, the impression of that um, floral in the background but look whoa um, about three inks there a couple of greens and a bluey color again distressings it's not the oxides the oxides are more opaque so with the regular distressings you'll see more of the pattern in the background next one Right, now I haven't even, I've just building this up. We haven't gone in with stencils yet at, at all. We've just used inks. But from that to that. So we've used a little bit of mustard seed, a little bit of um, spice marmalade, a bit of rusty hinge in that. And I've gone over the top with the stencils that you haven't seen yet using a VersaFine clay for that pop of intense black colour. Right, next one. So again, the papers look, I love that paper. I just think that is so pretty. Again, look. That and that. Oh, that is a stunning card. If you pop that down there so you see the reflection, it's kind of mirroring what's going on down there. I would love that card any day of the week. And I tell you what, if you overstamp that with that clear ink and that clear sparkle embossing powder, wow. With a pencil and a backing paper, you've done nothing to. But if you want to do a little bit more to it, check it out. Wow. Woohoo. So here's the thing. I want you to look full on mixed media without the mixed media products where you have to maybe buy the products that we think of mixed media on a canvas. With this, distress inks in the background again, dry it, this here stencils using just your white gouache that if you watch me and follow me, you know I love a bit white gouache for the highlights and um, just for regular stamping. So you'll have that in your kit. Sponge through the stencil with your sponge applicator again. Dry it. Then this here is just some uh, glycerin. If you use glycerin on your sponge applicator and sponge through, it acts as a um, as an ink, an embossing ink. And it doesn't mean you don't use your embossing ink pad because you need that for your fine stamp embossing. It just means it's going to be a bit of a money saver for you and you get more ink on there more more quickly by incoming glycerin because it will hold the embossing powder when you remove your um your stencil and then still going ah, i think this is my favorite marie i love this one so that i love that paper anyway I'm, i know it's my papers but you know i don't get a chance to do papers um very often at all maybe a couple of times before and i'm loving we're going to bring you more if you like them let me know let us know we'll bring you more and let me let us know if you like this concept where we've given you kind of that neutral so you play on top of it look again looks great as it is but wow look at that what happened to that one from that 
very subtle, a bit classy, a bit understated, a bit like myself. No, that's more me, I think. Yeah, a bit more in there, in your face. Here it is. Embossing powder, um, sorry, um, distress inks in the background. Uh, again, sponge applicator, flamingo, a bit of yellow in it, like that. Um, dry it, then use the white gesso again with your stencils that are in this set. This is why you see where everything, when it's brought together, just works. I have got another one, last one to show you here, the B. And that's the B there, the B paper. And I can't believe I've left that one till um, last because, you know, again, it is the day of the B. So from that to that one, full on, full colour. You know, just cut that down, trim it down and put some wording on there. You've got a card. You can bling up these bees. You can do it. You really don't need to do anything else to it. I wanted to give you value for money right the way along um, through the whole of this range. This is the one I've just popped on there for um, just to let you see how with a little bit of um, black suit or... Um, maybe pumice stone around the outside and then a little bit of just embossing on there with the stencils instead moving on to the stencils you've got a fabulous background there again I keep bringing out this same one i just think the fact that it's just graphite pencil and it looks that good on a card like that really yeah if you want to go a bit more you know woo opulent you've got your card there another one here using the warm can you see the cooler and the warm tones so on here I've used a copper embossing powder with a different stencil over the top. And look at that. That looks like it's from some kind of stately home, doesn't it? I'll tell you who would probably send that card. Yeah, Lawrence Llewellyn type, I reckon. He's frilly cuffs. He'd be loving that. That beats right up his street, I think. That kind of thing. So um, just quickly mention um, something else that just to show you with the stencils, um, Lou will show you the stencils, take you through them. They work the same as other stencils, but the idea is I wanted to leave them quite open so that they are also a blueprint. So what you've got here is um, a gorgeous uh, effect there with that so that you can see that that's also working for you. And that's it. Thank you very much. There we go. I mean, how much inspiration was there there? I, I think you can all go away and you have so many ideas already. Sheena, that was absolutely an absolute fantastic overview. I mean, that was just the stamps and the papers. I mean, it didn't really go into the stencils too much either. No, absolutely. And the thing is, is you know, that, that, um, that it was really important with the papers, Lou, that they, um, it wasn't about just the design. No. The designs were, you know, had to be the warm and the cool colours and have that arty kind of like theory behind them. But the layering and the texture um, but the surface had to be exactly right to take all the ink and I had that plan from the start and I thought me being me I think it's like a recipe you know you make something and think oh that looks nice I wonder if I just add this little bit here yes a bit like Mrs Crocky on the Wicker <laughs> yeah, the Vicar of Dibley or something you know, a bit of marmite in the chocolate cake I mean, nice lovely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no this is why your products are so unique though isn't it and unlike anything else um talking about the papers we saw the bumblebee it's of course world bee day lots of people have been talking about i need to be careful how i say that actually because bee day obviously <laughs> bee day um yeah. <laughs> uh, not the bathroom type of a bee day but a bumblebee day um <laughs> so many people talking about adding bumblebees into their into their paper crafting now it's so so popular to, so to have those now you've got those in the stamps let me just see it's with the sunflower isn't it the bumblebees uh, it is the, the sunflower yeah it yeah. is and and it's such a good symbol isn't it the bee loads of people um, relate to that yes. it's like overcoming the Absolutely. seemingly impossible with it you know and um and i yes. love that and there's a large one a small one as well so you can have it a yeah. feature bee I think this is it with my collections a lot of the time because I do go for larger images. Not that they don't fit on smaller cards, you know, they, they fit on great. We've got a lot of smaller format. If I just show you like this one, uh, Luke, you can see that. That's a smaller Beautiful. format uh, card there. That um, they still fit smaller, but it means you can go bigger if you want. Of course. And I think the other stamps that aren't the main focal one, you forget how good size those are that you can even do a little cute little card a minimalist card with that little bee on and just some wording Absolutely. and it look great yeah so it'll look great they're, they're really going to suit all styles of paper crafter aren't they um, absolutely 
Yeah. I need to do some hellos. I apologise. There's so many comments. Um, so we need to just say hello. I'm just going to go straight in. Uh, Rena Hurst. Um, hello to you. We've got, she's saying how beautiful it is. We've got Carmen. We've got Sue, Sue Pollock, sorry. Uh, Lynn Clifton. Uh, Claudia. There's so many, so many of you. Now, I will, I know, Sheena, you've been in the comments whilst the videos are playing. Yeah, um, I love it. You the interaction's there. brilliant, you know, because we team jump on, yeah. jump on, and you don't get that, you know, any other way than this. Exactly. Which so, is, we're loving. We're I was loving, going to yeah. say, you've got a, a lovely, a fantastically talented design team. Uh, they are, I don't know how many of them, but there's some of them certainly in the comments today. You've got YouTube mm -hmm. and you've got Facebook. If anybody has any questions at all, I'm sure they can answer them. Um, oh, my team are amazing. That's part are. of being the team. It's like what they signed up for. They love it because we know that, you know, it's only, something's as only as good as you know how to use it. And sometimes you get them and it made complete sense at the time. And then they sit with them like me a few days later and think, if you're lucky, you know, we've crap start a couple of days. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and then you think, uh oh, it's a falling out of my head. Well, that's where the main Facebook page comes in. Yes. Obviously, here, Craft Stash, a YouTube channel now. We've, we've covered so many bases and my group, the Inkettes. That's like the virtual clubhouse. That's where they hang out. Like, um, yeah, yeah, it's a little like crafting kind of club den. And if you ask how to do something, they're the people who created it. They're the ones who, who give the advice. And we love, they love that sharing. And they love seeing what you've done. And, and um, it, yeah, everyone's learned from each other. It's Brilliant. all positive. No, 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 you know, no vibes that are going to bring you down. Excellent. So That's what we like to hear. That's what crafting should be all about. Um, so speaking of the design team, can we see some of the absolutely beautiful cards that you and the team have made? Well, I'd love to show you because the thing is, is, um, is that one, can you see that one okay there? Absolutely. This I'm is, just going you know to what? remove, uh, we've got graphics and all sorts, so I'm just going to uh, remove those so we can see everything a little bit clearer. Beautiful. Oh, Isn't that stunning? You know, this is Pamela's, one of Pamela's cards, and I went, I bought little hard gems just to reproduce that card because I love it so much. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. It looks mystical and ethereal it and does. lovely. So that's the chrysanth, but look at how different this one is from Amanda. Look at their different style and look there. Gorgeous. I think that keep my head up. This is one of those fancy, thin, you know, um, little uh, tablets that track you. So if it sees me, it tries to look at me instead of the card. So I'm hiding. If I look like I'm, I'm hiding, I am. That one, actually, um, that card in the background, you can see that leaf work stencil that is the one yeah. that's completely exclusive, not being seen anywhere else yet. Absolutely, I love that. That we've got that just as an exclusive uh, yeah. here. It's lovely. And look at that. That's just stamped in black ink. You know, a little bit of water. So when you look at the pencil sketch one, you think, oh, that. that was just one pencil. But look at the effect you get with just one, um, you know, one ink pad. Shall I show you from another collection? I'll show you a few from oh, a different collection then. now. Keep swapping them up. So that's the chrysanthemum. Yeah. Now we have the, and this is the entwined Lou. This is the entwined floral. Beautiful. Now, am I right in thinking this one is almost a kind of a bit of a made up flower rather than. It's kind, you know what I did? I looked at um, like shapes, and the chrysanth could be lots of, chrysanths come in loads of colours. So that gives you a load of, of options anyway. The sunflower, there's lots of flowers that have got that standard daisy type shape as yes. well yeah but yeah this one could be like a stock it could be you know like the um and um, and other flowers that i know and i love the look of them yeah and i just say that's a lovely shape let's do something like that but i'm not sure of the name so it's the entwined is what there we is. go and i think it would work equally well horizontal or vertically as well i think it would and you could all and and, and there's a, a lovely one that julie's done this is um that was a sharon cut that one i just put um there debbie's here using that brush lettering let me show you this one that um if it's oh where's it gone I've lost it. no it's here we're good we're good we're You've good probably got so you know many. that in a monologue that people kind of try to like they look cool when they've got one yeah oh, wow i've got one lou you hear everything you hear the conflict in my head constantly so um, <laughs> that's the one i was looking for that's the one that um that uh julie created using the stencil in the background Beautiful. with the paste and the gilding plates look at how gorgeous that looks by extending that Stunning. so shall we look at a few other sunflower as well oh definitely because we have to with the day of the bee oh there we go I'll change it up there instead of your version there it try is... the day of the bee instead of 
The B day. The de- yeah, the B day doesn't quite. T- it's it, it's um, international B day. Um, yeah, the day of the B today. So the day is so so popular and a love a lovely little insect as well now this is also one of my favorite cards i know during the last video i was trying to sort of get sheena's attention to say i love that card yeah, but then yeah, there's also yeah, a delay that. so what she was watching uh, on facebook or youtube was not quite what i was seeing um, but <laughs> this one as well is this the one you're loving this is really clever this is debbie's yeah. card and she's made this look 3d by shading it hasn't been embossed but these stencils will emboss i should say that they're really heavy but the way she shaded them makes it look like it it's amazing. actually like paste. It is amazing. So sorry, did cool? you say that was Debbie or someone else? Debbie, that's that was Debbie. Debbie yeah. yeah, that. So, so I have um, eight amazing members of my design team, and we'll do a roll call on the next, maybe on the next okay. slide that we do, because they do. I try to call out as much as I can when it, when the cards are there. If they're on the back, and I can clearly see them because you know the eyesight's not what it was, Lou. <laughs> And um, yeah, they're just they're just talented and beyond like beyond words. And um, it is a team thing. It's always a team um, with me. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I tell you what we'll do then is um, we will watch another video. So this one is particularly concentrating on how you've inked those backgrounds, isn't it? Now I I absolutely love this because. Um, particularly the bee wings you'll know what I mean and everybody if you watch what what she does at the end with the bumblebee wings is just so clever uh, and really brings them to life now we'll watch this video then what we'll do is we'll come back you can do your roll call we'll definitely uh, do some (laughs) kudos to all the design team but also uh, we'll uh, announce that competition question so everybody can start entering to win that collection from you so everybody uh, enjoy this demonstration we'll be back with Sheena in just a few moments Okay, Lou, let me show you how, and everyone else, of course, how easily um, you can ink these backing papers and um, a couple of little tips and tricks. So if we look on this one here, we're going to work on the B. So um, we've got a really cool paper as it is. Lose it, use it as it is, but we're going to apply some colour. So as usual, I would always say apply the lightest colour first. So I'm going to say that the sunflower, let's, let's do a yellow sunflower. Now, Mustard seed is one of the strongest uh, colours in the whole of the Distress Ink line. This, is, this stuff is like, it's there. It is not subtle, a bit like myself. So what I'm going to do, a uh, big tip, get yourself some glycerin. If you haven't gotten it yet, get your local chemist. It's cheaper than the one that you get in the food aisle. You can get it online. It's just food grade glycerin. It doesn't have an aroma. It doesn't... Um, it's non-toxic and it's in fact it was originally in a lot of um a lot of hand creams and things i didn't realize that you know when i was young used to get like you know the you know the one that was the ding dong and used to like um you know uh, cosmetics that used to come to the door and they were calling if you know who i mean i could probably just say because we're not on the telly avon calling yes they used to have a um a rose and glycerin hand cream i don't know if you can still get it let me know if you can but yeah it's that same stuff that's in there use it in cake decorating and things like that if it's the food grade one but what it does the glycerin is it dilutes the color down see where there's more think of it if you were using a watercolor you would use water but with this technique water would just make it soak straight into the cord and it wouldn't move around and that wouldn't be a good thing so what glycerin does it's um it slows the drying process down it makes the ink thicker and it's kind of it's like as if it's oiling the cord it moves it across the surface much in a much freer fashion so you can see how cool that is that's color there we can put a little bit of that orange into the base of the petals to give it a little bit of contouring even a little bit like that yeah right that's the sunflower done sorted that don't go too heavy on the color because you want it to look a little bit um you know you still want to see the pattern through which is why i like to use the um the regular distressings rather than the oxides because oxides are more opaque than regular distressings and you um you know you won't show won't show what's going on underneath as well so i'm using some of the um rust no i'm using spice marmalade on these little bees now i'm not as worried about the wings because i'm going to show you it even flow, flow bleaches really well. So we've got that done there. 
we'll create a, a background and we might let's use a little bit of full-on color here with a crushed olive again because it's a background i'm using a little bit of glycerin now if you're worried about your distress inks splodge them onto your mat before you um you use the instead of taking the applicator to your distress ink splodge just the um ink to the mat and then uh put it on your applicator or put some ink on and then pick up the glycerin um i have never had any problems with um diluting the inks or anything so now what i'm doing is i'm going around with the um with the which one is the crushed olive quite a um a bright green this one so i'm thinking if we make it lighter in the middle a little bit zingy in the middle and then we'll go around darker around the outside now it, it's if it's looking a bit patchy i've done that that's in the layering it's meant to look a bit patchy you can blend it out a little bit more if you want it smoother but that's been in the the levels that i've put in there to make it look you'll see there's kind of like darker bits and lighter bits so that if you want to just leave it that's all good too and i'm going to now pop a little bit of crushed olive now this is a darker green around the outside so it's giving that impression of a very close-up image of these cute little bees doing their thing all busy with this gorgeous sunflower and when you get more ink on as, as you know with any card it becomes more um, easy to blend so you see i haven't had to add glycerin every time if you don't overdo it what will happen is if you just keep putting too much glycerin it is on is it'll take ages to dry so um you know and it'll come become a bit shiny it will dry eventually but you don't need that much on just know when to season desist just you know step back from the glycerin walk away and it'll be fine so we've got that going on there and then if you want to bring in a little bit more harmony in with the whole thing we'll be add a little bit more orangey bits in there sort of warm it up a little bit have a look and see what you think see if you want a little bit more texture going on in the background a little bit less texture if you want it um, a little bit more blended then you can go with just a little bit of glycerin and that often starts to take the color and blend it and smush it in um, for you if it's a little bit static looking so we've got that there i'm pretty much happy with that i think what i would do is i create a little bit of a darker border um don't i think i had blue on this card first just to give it that vignette remember if you're going to trim this down to put on a card i would trim it then do your vignette around the outside because you're going to trim away a lot of this darkened area here but just so you know i mean it's a it's kind of an old school technique and look to do you know i did what this when i was at ranger many years ago when i was in new jersey um learning firsthand how to use these products with tim holtz in the room um for two days it was a rather good thing they do it was their part of their ranger u program um i don't think they still they don't run that now but it was great because you get instead of chinese whispers you know exactly why and because i'm one of those people that i want to know why why is it doing that why do i want it don't just tell me it's good i want to know why it's good so that's what I, I do try to do for you. So you can see how now we've got that vignette looking around the outside. And we've used a lot of ink on this. And this, this is holding up. This paper is holding up. Thin card isn't, you know, it, it's standard. It's, it's up to the task. Now, the next thing you can do is you can take a little brush. Uh-oh, don't know where my paper is. I'll use this bit here. Hang on. Got some paper here. And you can take a brush and you see where the wings are We've lost a little bit of the wings. Pop that on there. Just agitate it a little bit and then blot it and you lift a lot of the colour. See how that's lifted that a lot there. Certain colours always full bleach better than others, but um, you'll definitely be able to lift it. You can see it's... So don't scrub the surface off the colour, just a little bit, just to encourage it. And then you've got his little wings back there and we've lost one. Oh, actually we can do a little bit of that in the background as well if you want to do a little bit of water droplets. But we've got so much to show you. This is seriously not even scratched the surface of what you can do with this set, this range. I could go on for, I could probably do a whole month, but Lou would be like, you know, well, probably bless her begging for release and trying to form an escape committee if that was the case. And understandably so. You know, fair's 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 fair. So there's his wings back in there. And we'll pop a little bit more 
on that one and we'll call that done with the layering we'll do more tutorials more more things with the stencils and layer but i wanted to just show you how you can ink that up um a little bit of glycerin is going to help you but from that monochrome but cool background to full-on full pop color thank you There we go. So, I mean, what you can do with one pattern paper is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? It really is. You're so clever, Sheen. I mean, I suppose these are techniques that we could have done in the past, but you giving us that paper that has the perfect surface is going to make it absolutely. so much better. At all these things, you know, paper is not exciting, is it? You know, when, you, when you're talking about, you know, the, get the right card, yeah. get the right stamping card, get the right watercolour card, invest in the paper. It makes a huge difference. Look at, look at, Look at colouring in on sandpaper. Absolutely. Who would have thunk it would make it so much easier to to achieve a, a really cool result using, you know, the wet and dry paper. So yeah, paper's massive, massively important. All these things. And I think it's important as well Lou, to to remember that sometimes if you've tried something in the past and you thought, No, it didn't work for me, may not have been anything you've done wrong. It could no. be something as simple as the surface of that paper was not the right surface and no way could you make it work if it was you know, the wrong surface. Absolutely, absolutely. I know we say that uh, a good, what is it, a, a good builder should never blame his tools, but I think it's, that's incorrect no. for artists. I think. Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely. And as crafters though, you know, I'm with you there, we love it. We love to make a saving, and we love to bring something in from the outside world mm. that is a um, isn't a crafting product, but like, wow, look at what it can do to me crafting with me crafting products. Like the glycerin on the paper there. Yeah, that little bit of glycerin. Your local chemist just get that. It's and it, it's such a fabulous addition for blending. If you've had trouble blending in the past, that is a real game changer and a big big help. Biggest tip I can give you that is, is that with the glycerin for sure. Absolutely, mine's on order after seeing your demonstration. <laughs> mine's on order. Um, you spoke about wet and dry paper or sandpaper. For anybody who's not seen you yet on social media, not already tuned into a video that you've done, they may be thinking, "What on earth is she talking about?" <laughs> sandpaper. Uh, do you have any cards there using that wet and dry paper or any examples? So you can just explain very yeah. quickly. Yeah, I love show this you technique. Couple. Is that, is that one that we did, Lou, still available? That one that we did together with the sandpaper technique? Is that one still there for people to Ooh, view? Oh, I think it got sent to, I think it got posted, didn't it? It got sent it away. It is, yeah. All right, well, that one there is sandpaper there. That is, now, oh, I see he's trying to find me again. Look, stop the camera. Look at the card, not me. Um, <laughs> so what it is, is, um, you know, there's a really pastel artist user, and, and you can get it on Craft Stash. And you know what? When I looked at the brands and the quality of the brands that Craft Stash stock, to me that's a sign of a a company that knows what they're talking about. And, and honestly, that was one of the main. And this isn't not me. Just this is me going off off piece completely. But right. I, I want to say this: when you find the Clairefontaine pastel paper, which is the, in my opinion, and in the artist's opinion, like the pinnacle of the surface you can work with a soft pastel and for paper. And you have that on there and you've got the other pastel papers. That's a company who knows the importance of the right thing. And that's a wonderful paper, but it's not the most um, cost, um, inexpensive paper. No. It's, a, it's an investment. Yes. So why I thought the sandpaper was great is it's, a, it's what they call a sanded paper. So use the sandpaper, practice on that, May use that for your cards. And then when you want to expand and move on and you think, wow, I love that effect. It's completely revolutionized the look and how easy it is to use my pencils. Then invest in the Clairefontaine for the artwork you're going to want to use with your foundation stamps to gift or go. to sell. Then you get the option of the colors too. So that's the idea of, I Absolutely. like to give people a, a kind of way to um, try it out without a massive investment, but then Definitely. progress to that point if you want to. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So that's, uh, it's not just sandpaper, is it? It's wet and dry. It's wet and dry. And yeah. if the grit needs to be, you look for the numbers, the bigger numbers. I went to the local DIY and I thought, oh, I never get excited about going to the DIY shop. And I thought, <laughs> if I'm going to the DIY shop, I'm going to get some. You know what? They didn't have it. So I had to buy two orange buckets instead, Lou. You know what? Oh, no, I, never mind. <laughs> well, there's not much I can do with an orange bucket, but craft wise. But you, you want 1,500 minimum okay. to about 3,000. 
um the that's the like the grit size for the yeah. it's the wet and dry paper the, it, and it, funny enough the shades of gray change with the different oh, okay. grit sizes too so get a few and it's really inexpensive if you shop around you get it's, it's so cheap as chips um if your local one's got it mind you and we have got on our YouTube channel, if you're watching on Facebook, go over to our YouTube channel because we do have a video of Sheena demonstrating that um, with a beautiful floral uh, image as well. So worth a look of that. Um, Sheena, now I asked you at the beginning if you could think of a question for us for a competition yes. because we've got three whole collections to give away. Wow. Two of them we will be announcing live very shortly after the next video, actually, but people need to enter now. So could you please give them a question to answer in the comments? Yes. Shall I give you? It's linked to my roll call. So should we do the whole oh. thing together? Okay. So yeah, my brilliant. design team who make these amazing cards are Debbie, Lisa, Pamela, Sharon, Kay, Amanda, Julie, and Karen. And the I have an extra obviously maria my ever kind of patient camera lady and tech advisor <laughs> and there's another member of the design team a little furry type one that you might have seen now and again who's a bit vocal now and again when we do the lives my little cockapoo what's she called what's her name she's the most important member of the whole team and the whole team know that including me just saying there Rina we go what's what's the name of my little cute little cockapoo who's also the team mascot and um she's kind of like the, the ask elvis you know on the radio used to be it's like <laughs> she was the old crafting cockapoo she knows all the answers oh okay so if you've ever seen uh, do you know what the, the answers are coming in already okay so i suppose a quick tip if you're not sure take a little look at maybe what other people are answering because <laughs> it's there it's no secret it's there absolutely but, but there we go. You just need to comment with the name of the little crafty cockapoo. And um, yeah, you'll be in with a chance of winning. That's both on YouTube and on Facebook, everybody. You've got about the next, let me see, uh, five, ten minutes to enter. And we'll announce two names in a short while. Uh, but in the meantime, we have another demonstration to watch. I'm really excited about this one as well. Um, Sheena, thank you so much for putting all of these together for us. Keep commenting, everybody, um, and we'll announce some names shortly. I'll be back with you in a moment. All right. Right then, so let's have a little bit of fun with this sunflower. Uh, a little bit of a quirky technique I just came across having a bit of a play. Because again, it's one of those things that, um, you can look at the finished samples and look at what we do and me, I and the team and think, well, okay, if you're new to it, that I don't know how they got that, I don't know how they got there. Let me show you how absolutely um, kind of free and easy and just, well, it's called scribbly. It's scribbly colouring. That's that's it. I can't, I'll have a look. It'll be, it'll be clearer. Have a look at this. So the first thing is, this is what we're going to start off with. This little stamped here thing here. I'm, I've stamped the sunflower, the wireframe version, using a pale distressing. Either I think I use linen or old paper, something like that. Just enough to see, but as pale as you can get it and still see it. Next thing I'm going to do is going to pick a pen and the micron pens I'm absolutely loving. And <clears throat> what I would say is find a set that has a smaller nib in it. 0.1 or 0.3, maybe a 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, I'll use a 0 0.3. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, the idea here is I am out of my comfort zone, right? I'm not doing what I would normally do. I'm wanting to draw wibbly wobbly um, without precision and make it look a little bit looser and quirkier than I would normally draw. <clears throat> now that isn't easy if that's not your natural drawing style and it isn't mine so it takes some getting used to so don't think oh she does this all the time or that you know this is what you do it doesn't always help because it's like um it, it's this is this is when you're used to doing something a certain way it's much more difficult to unlearn than to do it like that in the first place so if you have not got the steadiest of hands, brilliant. This is the, this is the one for you. If you have got a steady hand, have a, maybe 10 cups of coffee or something and try it again. You'll find it's much easier. Or just be in my presence for a while, you know. You'll find you'll be like, whoa, a bit cheeky. You know, people do. But anyway, so I'm going around. Now, the other thing I'm doing to help me with this is I'm holding the pen. Look how far back I'm holding the pen. 
If I was drawing this in a more precise fashion, my hand would be much closer to the nib and I would be anchoring my hand and I would want like precision and I'd make sure I've got a, a much better um, you know, stability while I was drawing, but I'm deliberately making it more difficult to get that look by holding the pen way back. And if the lines look broken sometimes as well, that's great. And also I should mention, don't feel you have to be precision on going on top of the lines that I've got there. Ignore some of them, put some new ones in if you want. It doesn't matter. What you're doing is you're creating this um, really fun, loose, um, you know, original, quirky outline and that's it. And look, I'm not even going where that leaf is. I might want to, let's, let's, I might even put another leaf in there, look. Yeah, there's another leaf. I might put another leaf there. Because I can. All right, and then we'll put a little bit there. A little bit, look, not super detailed because we're going to go over the top with this and detail it in a little bit more shortly. So I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not really putting any more than that in. That's it, that'll do. Right, I'm not going to continue with that anymore right now because I've got one I went a little bit further on. Oh, before I do, let me show you. So some of these, make them, pick them out. Some of them you don't need to. Maybe you want to make a little bit more um, squiggles around the, the base of these. And what that will do is like when I'm drawing the stamps, it'll make this look a bit darker around there. So it'll make your domed centre of your sunflower look a little bit more curved. Convex, not concave, because that would be wrong. You have to think about that. It's like the stalagmite and stalactite thing, isn't it? Oh. Right, so we've got that going on there. The other thing to do, if it's right, you've got a wireframe, but we can play around a little bit more. So you can look, this is where the scribbles are starting. Scribbles are starting already. All right, I'm going a little bit scribbly where I'm thinking the line might be a little bit weightier, a little bit thicker. And I'm still holding the pen a little bit further back, and I can pick out some of these petals where I think maybe the shadow's gonna be falling down here, maybe at the base of there, and go scribbly, look. Oh, look at me, scribbling, I don't care, look at that. Okay, still holding the pen further back, scribble, scribble, scribble. So I'm now kind of shading, but with complete and utter just freedom, not worrying about it. This is a, one of those things, again, you know, you, you, have a try, you know, the kids are in bed, or you've just sitting there, you're sitting in front of the telly, get your little lap tree out, Get your pen out, stamp a couple of bits, and just have a play. This is the play, a bit of stamp and play. You see how that looks better already? That there, a little scribbly, a little bit of that. See how it's coming together? Right, let me show you one I did earlier, All right? That I've taken a little bit further, and I stamped a little bee in there, and I did the same thing. And these little wings, maybe I'll thicken these wings at the base here, so it's got a little bit of a shadow there in his wings, and we can see them a bit clearer. And instead of colouring him in, I've created like a little band of black there, a little bit band of black at the bottom, a little bit hairy bits for his head. And that's about it. And again, see, started to draw in some squiggles and go over the lines. Still that same pen, don't thicken the pen, just go over the lines and it'll look quirky and it'll look fun and it'll start to it's fun and it's loose but it's got a plan still the plan is I'm thickening it where I think the shadow would be so when if you've seen me colouring the other flowers and I've talked about the leaves casting a shadow and in here having less light I'm still sticking to that plan but in a scribbly fashion so it's got some structure to the whole thing it's not completely random but it's got a looser random look so it's not just going to be accidental that it looks cool at the end does that make sense that's now ready for the next stage which is going to be a big brush with some water now make sure you this is important micron pens or the um faber castell pens um online they also make sure they're waterproof um archival and waterproof they need to be water resistant ink because if you do what i'm going to do now and it's not, you'll know you're gonna have a black splodgy splodgy mess. So like when you stamp with black soot distress ink and you blend the line, uh, that's what you're gonna get. So the next thing is, I might even just use this brush. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm decided I'm just gonna do it. So I'm gonna pick up some yellow and I'm gonna splodge in the middle of this, middle of the sunflower. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of brown around the middle, then the 
the edges, not the middle, the edges like that. Like if you're not feeling like you want to use a huge brush like this, that's fine to use a smaller brush if you want. But the idea is I'm going loose with the colour. All right, we're going sort of where the flower is, but not precisely where the flower is because I want the colour. That's why I wet the card a lot. I want it to wick outside a little bit of that area. Let me put a little bit around there. And this is going to create the underpainting for what we're going to do next. So this is not the whole story. This is just just the start of the story. So you just want a little bit of colour underneath like that. And if you see something happen and you think, I like it, I don't like it, you can, you can affect it to a degree, which we will in a sec, because that middle bit, I'm thinking I'm going to tidy that up just a tiny little touch. But the longer you leave this, the more that will wick. See how I've just dried my brush and I've picked out a little bit of the colour there. And now I've got a highlight there if I wanted. But I'm going to pop a little bit more of that brown so I can make it a little bit more controlled if I want to like that. See, I picked a little bit out, put a little bit more back in. It's a little bit strong there. So I'm gonna pop a little bit more of the yellow. Um, right, we better color the bee in a little bit. I must color this little guy in a little bit orangey red. Oh, I've covered his wings. We'll have to put a bit of flow, flow, a bit of flow bleaching on there or something. Yeah, that'd be fine. Because we're gonna go over with pen and colors to create the darker color on him as well so all right that's cool enough there right now that's already started to wick and the colors coming out now it looks quite pretty as it is let me show you what we've got close up i'm going to dry this now okay and then we're going to go over the top with gel pens and fine liners so i'm going to be quiet for a minute while i dry this as quickly as i can I should have mentioned as well you can see how much water I added to that you're going to need a good 300 280 gsm card because you're gonna you're gonna be um, putting it through its pieces but I actually think that looks really cool as it is if you want to intensify some of that color go ahead and do what we just did again and it'll build up and the color it watercolor always dries paler but here's what we're going to play with now this is this is just super fun so Packet of fine liners, like lovely Lisa Horton's pack of fine liners here. And I'm going to pick out some colours. And I'm going to use orange, and I'm going to use a reddish colour. And I'm going to use obviously green and a darker, a couple of darker greens. And if you look, I've got the little colours on the top here. Can you can you see that there? Yeah, they're the colours I'm picking out from. And I think maybe a brownie colour. And that one so you're not going to know what you've got until you take them out and have a bit of a look so if you're not sure get a bit of scrap paper and have a bit of a scribble so the first thing we're going to do we want a yellowy color orange yellow that's that's great we can play with that that's a good one keeping that and see what that one this one I don't know if it's paler or darker oh paler that's great right start with that so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this and I'm going to start scribbling, might be a little bit too pale, but we'll see, around the outside and over the petals like that. This is almost like uh, fluorescent orange, love it. Okay, like this. And you're thinking, well, what are you doing? It's gone all a little bit even more, a bit more crazy, but that's fine because what we're doing is that yellow was just the undercoat and now 
by giving it crazy texture um, and pop of, pops of colour but without having to colour the whole thing in your eye thinks the whole thing's darker just by popping that little bit of the colour in um, random, well not random, I'm putting a little bit on the tip and a little bit more maybe at the base but scribbling still and you can see where I've done it, it's looking more glowy, it's warmer and that's just that one colour and I'm speed colouring here, really notice how much care I'm not taking and that's when I teach workshops, that's when you say okay here's the thing, just do it, just seize the day, don't overthink it, in fact just don't think if you can help it, that, that, try and avoid it and then just 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 do it and this is going to bring out that detail even more textures and it's about layering it when you first get the first one down you think oh i don't know but when we start adding more and more it looks cooler and cooler so see again just sort of this is what i don't know I, I, it was something i was playing with and i thought you know how do i get out of my comfort zone and really just go for it what happens if i do this and i whoa i think that looks really cool I just really like that look. So I've called it scribble colouring. I'm quite literal. You know, and maybe if somebody else on a, another parallel dimension, because you know you think you've done something, you come to it in your own way, and then somebody else is doing it, it's got a name and it's a phenomenal a phenomenon on the internet. But hey ho, you know, you've discovered it yourself, you've come to your own, like I say, come to it in a um, experiential way. And um and so I'm calling it scribble colouring and you can't get any more kind of less intimidating than scribble can you so we've got that yeah oh, hi hey. it's looking already like it's popping um green let's do let's see how pale the screen is maybe yep that's too pale so have a scribble i've scribbled it on there you'll not see it it's it's literally got to sit against a stronger green so i've eliminated that one let's try that one we can get something out of that one yep so the lighter green Scribbling around the, the leaf like this. Literally, scribble, scribble, not colouring it in. Don't try and colour it in. If you try to colour in with this pen, seriously, it's like it's like scrubbing the deck of a ship with a toothbrush. You don't want to do that, not for pleasure. No Surrey Bob. 